Love, dreams, romance. Romanticism is a very important part of music. Um, I think we all strive, we, we live, we first construct our lives by dreaming first and then we build our lives on those dreams. And part of that is the ability to be romantic. And I think part of interpreting music is being able to get out of the present material situation and go into a romantic world. It's a large part of music. palette because I only wear black. I design couture evening wear and I never wear what I design. Therefore I can design whatever I please. I don't have any goals in life because I believe that if you ever achieve them, what are you going to do next? You can wear my dresses dancing to a cold porter or a Gershwin tune. Whereas I prefer to slam to dead Kennedy. So do you watch TV at home in bed a lot? Oh yeah, I do. Well, that's it. well, I have my TV on uh, all night long, and you I fall asleep with it on. Yeah, and I wake up with it on in the middle of the night and sometimes. What? Well, I. What's your favorite thing to watch late um, night? We we run some news. Of news? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old news? Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that channel. Gee, who, who are those kids? Those are the Flesh Tones, this rock group. They started out at the Mud Club. Oh, 
Do you have a motorbike? You ever a motorbike or a motorcycle? Yeah, I have a Harley. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. There's okay. nothing I like better than getting on my Harley and riding around town. Moto fashion and a trip through tunnel and much, much more. a train station becomes a disco. Well, that's just a symptom of the times. And I personally believe that every single train station in this country should become a disco. And I will work towards that goal. starts all the way down the basement and goes all the way up to the first floor. This is the gold bar. It's made out of 24 karat gold and goes all the way down into the basement. I tin bar the gold bar and believe me it ain't the end of the rainbow. I hear you're an art cop. I really don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's the way the neighborhood's gone. There's a gallery on every corner. What are you going to do? Andy, what's an art cop? I don't know. What's an art cop? Well, 
I don't, that's why I asked you. I don't know. No, I never heard of an art I've never heard of Some of you cops are. <laughs> The Mud Club? Yeah. It used to be the coolest place around. The place where every undiscovered artist rubs shoulders with the rock and roll crowd. But all that's changed. The music went uptown or to Hollywood. I don't know where. And me? I'm an art cop, just like my old man, walking a beat on the back streets of the art world. So, Brooke, didn't this used to be the old mud club? Yes, it um, was up until about three and a half years ago. I mean, this used to be the hottest club in New York. What happened? Well, I don't know exactly why it closed, but um, yeah, it was. The, in fact, it was a big, an art world club. What did happen? I mean, back then, rock and roll was the biggest thing. Well, I think that, you know, people were still, uh, you know, there's drugs and alcohol and uh, staying out late. And I think all of a sudden it became, uh, the art world became a little more serious and um, um, people maybe stopped, I don't know, staying out as late. Maybe everyone was just getting older and uh, couldn't stay out as late. So now instead of getting bombed, uh, they're getting framed. Yeah, I guess that's one way we could look at it. What was so great about the Mud Club is nobody knew what it was. And, and Tier 3 was another place like that. There were all these places that nobody really knew what they were, except we didn't have anything else to do. Robert, you're, a, you're an artist who's always played a lot of rock and roll. Uh, what is it that makes uh, a painter or a sculptor get into music uh, in the first place? I can look, look at work that I've done and kind of figure out which paintings, which records I've listened to while I've made certain work. It's kind of like choreographed in that sense. It's like, it's kind of like, the records have a lot to do with like being like the fuel that powers the machine. It's like, you know, it's like dropping another nickel in the machine or something like that. So how do you figure out which came first, uh, the art or the music? They're not illustrations of the music, you know? It's not like, not like making new wave art. It's, uh, the music is real conducive to it. It's just real, you know, I get more productive when there's better music. It just means I can, like, be in the studio longer, otherwise I just want to watch TV. Do you, I mean, do you like, how, how, did, how did you become a model? How did it all happen? Um... My acting teacher told me I should be a model. So. Oh, it's usually the other way around. I know. <laughs> did you ever take ballet classes? Yeah, when I was little, I took ballet. Oh, you did? I like oh, it. God, it is. It is yeah, it's great. It's actually. Wish I could have done it. Did you ever go to the ballet? Oh, uh, yeah, I went to the ballet uh, just last week. Which one? Uh, I saw a static uh, <laughs> orange. Was it good? Yeah, it was really great. Yeah. <laughs> I danced in a lot of ballets in the New York City Ballet. I am currently appearing in Peter Martin's new production, which is called Ecstatic Orange. Um, I, I think I'm just myself in the ballet. The ballet Ecstatic Orange is about the color orange. I composed the music for it. I dance with Heather Watts in Ecstatic Only. And everywhere else. And I'd like to dance with Heather Watts in every other ballet. It's efficient to use a mirror when, to compose because then you can get the theme to go backwards and uh, upside down and other kinds of fun things to do to make the melody go longer. I don't have any mirrors in my apartment at all because I spend my life in front of a mirror. I can actually look at a mirror and not see. I don't see what other people see in a mirror. 
Do you? What do you see? I just see like this thing. I've stood in front of a mirror since I was 10 years old when I started ballet every day for hours. So I look at it and it's sort of, it's not me. If I want to look at myself, I, I have to look at a picture or something. When I look in the mirror, all I see is a huge head. <laughs> <laughs> look. It's Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes with Victor Love. Hello. I'm Victor Love, and I played Digger Thomas in Richard Wright's Native Son. Now, when I was preparing to do the role, I used to read this book every evening before we did our little uh, scene the next day. And when I was really pressed for time, I would take out the old trusty cliff notes. So anyway, I thought I would like to share with you how I did what I did. So we'll just take a page at random, page 80. Mary Dalton. I killed her. By accident, of course. Jan gets out of the car. Jan is played by Matt Dillon, and Mary Dalton is played by Liz McGovern. She leaned her head on his shoulder, my shoulder. You don't mind, do you? Of course I mind it, but I read for you. I don't mind. You know, for three hours you haven't said yes or no, she says to me. She doubled up with laughter. He tightened with hate. I'll leave it for you to figure this out. Go see the movie. Write me. Oh, look at the wall to wall group. From Washington. I know my rights. And I've got a right to choose. Do what I like. Never need to be excused. I set my sights on the nicest thing in view. If I don't want to be with you Can't think of anything nice to say If you can't get your way Tell that I hope it's not too rough on you Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes with Victor Love, Ian McKellen, The Flesh Tones, Sakara Dogs, Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley called her nanny goat. I was the first. To make it the very first. It was me, Chuck Berry, and uh, James Brown, what you would call rock and roll, or rhythm and blues, whichever one is the same thing to me. Uh, because Muddy Waters, Lil Walter, and Jimmy Rogers, Jimmy Reed, and, and Elmo James was all blues artists, you know. So when I came alone, that's the reason why they started calling it Rhythm and Blues, because nobody knew anything else to, to call it. The only other music that was going on was country and western, and they couldn't call what I was doing country. I don't mind... Uh, dealing with a little change, you know, uh, because uh, you got different generations coming up and the kids that are really listening at rock and roll now, uh, some of them are grandkids to the ones that put me where I'm at now, you know, so I'm real happy to be able to still be accepted by little bitty guys, man, you know, it's real weird, but it's great. As far as them uh, people copying my tunes, I love it. You know, I think it's really great. I'm thankful that uh, I was smart enough and uh, uh, talented enough, I'll put it that way, uh, to come up with something that a lot of people thought enough of to do. Because I know a lot of musicians, a lot of people got a lot of songs out that nobody has tried to copy. I'm going to read you a story, Andy, called The Magic Flute. It's a bedtime story. Act one. A wild rocky pass near the Temple of Isis. Prince Tamino, dressed in Japanese hunting costume and carrying a bow but no arrows, rushes down the pass.
Opera at the Academy is trying to develop young talent to do more than just stand and sing. It, more, more theater, uh, heavy duty on the acting, and, and you have to be able to sing. But the number one thing is to bring opera into the 20th century and, uh, and get, you know, the populace um, try to build up an audience for this thing. I uh, initially started out in musical theater. Um, my father, however, is a singer, and uh, he sings in the Met, so I was aware of what was going on over there. I, but I got so tired of seeing, like, giant women singing Wagner, or, and my father got a hernia from carrying so many heavy women across the stage. So I decided to look for something different, and uh, I happened to find the Academy. At the academy, they had classes that that helped coach you in an aria in a new theatrical way. And once we started doing productions, they were a lot more theatrical. I find it a, an exciting place to work. And I think my personal work has grown from being there. to create uh, a special theater where there would be a spectacle which is as great as a rock show and would create an event which would be not for an aging audience but for a young audience for uh, a new audience and to make it as hot and as accessible as a, as any rock show would be The most memorable audience reaction was uh, a woman who had known the opera for some years and said that uh, if Mozart had heard it and was the kind of person that we think he is, he would have had a really good time. As it rises to a glorious climax, the curtain falls. Wasn't that romantic? Do you go out a lot? No, because I'm working all the time. But you know, oh, that's great. Once in a while, I go. I go on weekend dates. So. Oh, you go. You pick up photographers, or who do you like? <laughs> which, which? What kind? Or do you go out with models, or? No, not models. No. Never models. Photographers. Right? Photographers sometimes. Uh -huh. um, just boys off the street. No. <laughs> You should take our boys out to sleep. Ian McKellen, Old Diddley, Sakara Dogs, and much, much more. each other's work and then we started working together in live situations and then we moved to New York and uh, I was doing solo shows at that time because I didn't have a band so we were just doing solo guitar and projections and we always felt an affinity to each other's work because um, there's a certain kind of vibrational theory that neither of us really understand but are following intuitively that we seem to be able to do together better than separately. I want to I want to tour in a big bus like what um, what Kenny Rogers has really that has a recording studio and its own Mr. Coffee and um, and, and video and, and broth everything. So that's that's my thought on the road. I mean, we'll 
We'll work small until we can get bigger, of course. Actually, it's working tiny until we get small. <laughs> okay. Flushstones, and we'll be right back. The way that I feel about romance is that in order to have a romance, first of all, you've got to have freedom and independence and sincerity. I'm working on the song, ironically, that you asked that called Only the Heart That Binds. And it says, after wasted years, after bitter tears, the paper won't erase the fears. face with nature's own hand painted hast thou, the master mistress of my passion. A woman's gentle heart, but not acquainted with shifting change, as is false women's fashion, an eye more bright than theirs, less false in rolling, gilding the object whereupon it gazeth. A man in hue, all hues in his controlling, that steals men's eyes souls amazing and for a woman wert thou first created till nature as she wrought thee fell a doting and by addition me of thee defeated by adding one thing to my purpose nothing but since she pricked thee out for women's pleasure mine be thy love and thy love's use their treasure Do, but the boot, that 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 do, but